Is it bacon? Is it mac and cheese? Is it steak? I mean, what I miss the most is quite the common question that I get as a vegan, and it's usually circling around food. So I thought today I'd go over that as well as what I miss that isn't food. And as a heads up, it's gonna get real. I'm gonna cover a few things that I think vegans don't typically talk a lot about. So try to stick through to the end. But first, let me welcome you to Vegan Yak, where I yak about all things vegan. So if you're looking for some information about veganism, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell down below. So that way next week when another video comes out and I'm yakking about something else vegan, you'll be the first to know. Thank you to all of you that are already subscribed and let me start by asking you a question, especially if you're a vegan, what do you miss the most? Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below and if you're not a vegan then I guess tell me what you think you'd miss the most if you went vegan. What would I miss? Like uh everything? Hmm, maybe try to be specific. Now when it comes to food I think it's important to know where I was coming from before I was vegan and my attitude towards food because it has an impact on what I miss and I don't miss now. So when I was a kid I was definitely really picky. I didn't really like vegetables like many kids and then of course as an adult like many I started to try new foods and find the foods that I loved. But I still did notice that I was doing something that I think you'll relate to. Are you ready to order sir? Uh, I don't know, maybe. I always get the Alfredo but I want to try something new. Um, do you have any recommendations? Well, our most popular dish is definitely the house-made lasagna, but I personally really like the stuffed peppers. Do you like spicy food? Uh, yeah, I do. Then I think you'd love the stuffed peppers. Okay, yeah, stuffed peppers sound good. Um, I'll take the Alfredo. I would constantly just eat the same things over and over again. At home, we would just be eating the same dishes and cycling through them. And then when we'd go out to restaurants, we'd go to the same restaurants, which are our favorites, and I'd order my favorite dish. So it's the same food over and over again. And I realized that I didn't want to do this because I wanted to try new things. So I started to do something that most people think is weird. But when we would go out to eat, I would not order any of my own food. What? I would just start by telling servers that I want to be surprised. I would say I'm not picky, I'm not allergic to anything, spicy food is totally okay, I just want to be surprised. And as you can imagine, I definitely was. I got a lot of dishes that I wouldn't typically have ordered for myself, and I really loved it. In fact, I only had two rules, which was that I had to finish the dish no matter what, and that I had to tip well no matter what. And because I got to try all of these different dishes, I just really loved doing this. In fact, you can put this on the list of things that I miss doing, because even though I will do this from time to time still at a vegan restaurant, at other restaurants, where the whole menu's not vegan or the vegan options are limited, I can't do this as much. I mean, hopefully as the movement grows, this will change and I can do this more and more because I really truly did love it. But this brings me to my attitude towards food because I really didn't care what I was eating. I mean, I just didn't even really have the choice. I wanted it to taste good, sure, at the end, I wanted the result to be good, but I really couldn't be picky because I didn't have the choice. And in a sense, then I didn't have any strong preferences. So what's the point of this seemingly off-topic tale? Well, when somebody asks me what food I miss the most, I can honestly say I do not miss any food, period. Full stop. My attitude towards food now more than ever as a vegan is that I want it to nourish my body first and foremost, and that I want it to taste good. And as a vegan, I only eat delicious food. Let me repeat that. As a vegan, I only eat delicious food. I'm not sitting here forcing myself meal after meal to eat everything that I hate. And being a vegan in this day and age is really not much of a sacrifice. But I do hate giving this answer because it seems like I'm being disingenuous. It seems like I'm just selling the person on veganism that there's not any cons. And that's why I usually will follow up with the disclaimer that not all vegans feel this way. Although in the conversations that I have with the vegans that I know, I do think that this is an opinion that's held by many. Now usually though, this is when the person will push on me a little bit. Come on man, you don't miss bacon? If it's not bacon, then it's cheese or something else, but no, I do not miss these. I mean, for one, you can find vegan versions of these, and I found vegan versions of all the foods that I used to enjoy, and even if I didn't, it just really wouldn't matter because there's so many other tasty options that are out there. I mean, there's 80,000 edible plant species, you know, or at least I think that's the estimated number. So it's like owning 80,000 Lamborghinis and you, you get rid of a few, and someone's sitting there going like, well, don't you miss those when you have 80,000 others? No, no, I don't miss those. You know, but I do know some vegans that don't share this opinion. They do say that they miss like cow's cheese or bacon and that the vegan versions don't do it for them. But it must not be that big of a deal because they're still vegan, you know, even though they say they do miss some foods. The other point to make about food, well, two things really. One, I don't view animals as food anymore. You know, back before I was vegan, I would see an animal product, especially one that's more in its like whole form, like a steak or something. And I would think, oh, well, that looks good, especially if I was hungry. But now the thought process is quite a bit different. 
you know, once you've done enough research and you've seen the slaughterhouse footage and everything, you can't unlift that veil. So what you see now is body parts. You see the suffering, you know, especially when it's more in its whole food form, like a steak, you're seeing the chunk of muscle. You're not seeing food. When it's something that's not in its more whole form, like a steak or something, but instead it's a burger, the thought process is different and interesting and it actually has evolved for me over time as a vegan. But back when I first started living a vegan lifestyle, I would see a picture of a burger on an advertisement or something and I'd go, oh, that looks good. And then my brain would kick in and go, oh wait, no, that's disgusting because it's a dead animal and you'd seen the suffering. And if that's hard for you to understand as a non-vegan, maybe this will help you out. Imagine that a new burger place is opening down the street from you and you start just getting bombarded with all these advertisements for them on YouTube or TV or wherever. And you're seeing these ads and they have the pictures of like the most perfect looking burger. I mean, you can just tell that the meat is super juicy and tender. The bun looks amazing. All the toppings look fresh and delicious. And they're promising you it will be the best burger that you've ever tasted. Now at this point, your mouth is probably starting to water and you're starting to think, damn, I gotta give this place a shot. Then the commercial is coming to a close and it informs you that you're looking at a new type of burger. It's a 100% human meat burger. Do you still want that burger or do you now think it's disgusting? What if they told you that it was from the most tender meat that they could get so it was humans that are less than two, like a human version of veal? Does it still look appetizing? What's interesting about burgers and other traditional animal-based foods is that they don't at all resemble what they came from. I mean, burgers, hot dogs, sandwiches, nuggets, they're all processed and they don't resemble what they came from. I mean, they don't look like cows, pigs, or chickens. You know, if I gave you some ground up meat or a hot dog or something and I asked you what it was made of, in all reality, you'd have no idea. Pfft, I could tell, I could totally tell. You wouldn't know what meat it was or even if it was meat because when these products are vegan they don't resemble you know beans or other plants and if the product was made out of human meat it wouldn't resemble humans burgers just look like burgers and because you've likely had many that you've enjoyed over your lifetime when you saw a picture of another one you'd probably think it's appetizing regardless of what it's made of as long as it still looks close enough to the food that you previously enjoyed but then once you realize what it's made out of, you might change your mind about if it's appetizing or if it's something that you would buy. By the way, the picture that I used is not a human burger or a non-human animal burger. That mouthwatering burger is made entirely from plants. Now a few years into living a vegan lifestyle, the thought process is a little bit different when I see a burger because I usually have the negative thoughts first and think, oh, that's disgusting, I don't want that because I'm assuming that it's made from animal products. But then my brain kicks in and thinks, well, but if it was made from plants, then it would look delicious and amazing and I would want it because it's vegan. So just a small change in the order of things, but I just don't view animals as food anymore. So if I know a product comes from animals, then I don't miss it. And in this example, you could swap the burger out for something else like mac and cheese, and the same concept would play out. When you first see the mac and cheese, you might think, ah, oh, it's delicious and it looks amazing. But if you find out that it's made from human milk or dog milk or rat milk or something else, you might think it's disgusting and you might change your mind. Another way of putting this and maybe clarifying it a little bit further is like if there was a person that's vegan and they missed something like crab or whatever and they wanted to go eat it, they literally can't go and eat it and be where they were before. It's literally not possible. I mean, sure, they can go and eat the crab and they can get the taste and the texture of the crab, but they can never go back to having that ignorance that they once had. So what they're really missing is the, the ignorance because that's what allowed them to have the pleasure. And I don't really value ignorance in that way, so I don't miss it. I mean, if somebody offered me the chance to, you know, wipe my memory entirely and go back to the place of ignorance and cognitive dissonance, I would say no because I value the truth and being able to progress in my life in that way much more than I value the sensory pleasure of food. The other point about food and me not missing any is the fact that taste buds change. You can replace the foods that you're eating now with other foods, and oftentimes your taste buds will acclimate to the newer foods that you're eating. And other things can affect your taste too. I mean, the way it's prepared, of course, or you might've had a change in your traditions or your culture, you know, other environmental factors, your sense of smell. I mean, taste buds can change, and this is probably already obvious to you. If you look back a decade ago, you might've liked entirely different foods, or when you were a kid, you might've hated tomatoes and now you love tomatoes. I mean, our taste buds change. Imagine if you gave up refined sugar, all refined sugar for 30 days, and then you went and you drank a soda. You know, you might find now that your once favorite soda is way too sweet. And that's just in a 30 day window. Imagine being vegan for years, you know, your taste buds can change. And it's another reason that I can honestly say that I do not miss any foods from before I was vegan. But let's get real for a second. Just because I don't miss foods doesn't mean I don't miss anything. 
When you start living a vegan lifestyle, it's about a whole lot more than the foods that you're eating and it can affect nearly every aspect of your life. So what do I miss? Well, first, let me put an asterisk next to all of these because I don't want them to be misconstrued. Some of them are more minor than others and none of them are really a huge deal, at least not big enough of a deal that I would go against my morals and stop being vegan. The main thing that I miss from before I was vegan is hard to put into words, but I think it'd be best phrased as peace when I'm with others. And this might be tied to the thought that ignorance is bliss. And again, I don't really think that ignorance is better. I'm glad that I know what's going on, but because I know what's going on with animal agriculture and its effects, it can make social events difficult given my moral stance. And let me be clear about what I mean when I'm saying peace when I'm with others. I don't mean that we're constantly like breaking out into difficult conversations about veganism and that it's getting really heated or we're fighting. It's actually quite the opposite. It's when the conversations aren't happening that I feel my most inner turmoil. And that's of course a feeling I didn't have before I was vegan. It is entirely not peaceful to be surrounded by people doing something that you believe is morally wrong. And yet, because it's so ingrained in our society, it's virtually impossible to escape. If you're vegan, you already understand this, but I do find that vegans are shying away from talking about how much this sucks or how tolling it can be on our psyche, probably for the fear of driving non-vegans away. I mean, vegans, myself included, are often shying away from talking about any of the inconveniences or cons of living a vegan lifestyle because we feel that it might cause someone to not wanna be vegan themselves. But let's be totally honest here. There are things, like what I'm discussing now, that are not fun or enjoyable about knowing the truth and living in it but not discussing these things and the cons about living a vegan lifestyle is not gonna help anybody come to veganism and live a vegan lifestyle either. It's not hard to find the number one reason that people don't stick to a vegan lifestyle. Because they change their morals? No. Because they have a health issue? Nope. Because bacon? No. No, the number one reason for people that have stopped living a vegan lifestyle, why they did that is because their social pressures and social surroundings were so uncomfortable that they decided they didn't wanna keep being vegan. So if we don't start talking about things like that and how to change it, then we're all still gonna to have to endure it. And if you're not a vegan and you're watching and you don't understand, I'd ask you to engage in this thought experiment. Just imagine that you were living in a society where for thousands of years, it was totally normal to eat other people. Although it doesn't really matter what immoral act you choose, so just choose one that fits for you and don't think that this is about comparing eating humans to eating animals. That's not the point, so don't get lost. Just imagine that you're in this society where it's totally normal to eat other people, but then you discover that you don't have to kill and eat people to survive, so you're morally against it and you decide to stop, but everybody else doesn't. Now imagine in that society what every social event would be like for you. Imagine going to a family gathering and seeing the tables filled with dead human dishes. You know, human brisket, human ribs, maybe a whole human that was spun on a rotisserie as a centerpiece. Imagine the conversations that people would be having talking about how amazing that human tastes telling mom or dad how they did such a great job on cooking that human this year and they'd ask for the recipe on how to keep the meat so tender and juicy. Uncle John would be talking about how he went out and shot his own human you know, for his upcoming holiday or celebration. And all the guys would chime in and talk about how they'd like to go hunt human with him sometime. They'd reminisce about that day last year where they burnt the human so bad that they had to throw that human away and go get cheap human through the drive-thru. You know, and they laughed and they laughed because it was such a funny day. Now imagine what you'd be feeling. Would you wanna stay there? Would you be able to keep quiet? Would you accept the invite to the next dead human meal? No, those crazy I'd start a war. Regardless of the actions that you would take, I think you'd be able to agree on the emotions that you would have, which would probably be sadness, anger, despair, maybe confusion. And I'm sorry for such a gross example, but I think it makes the point. And again, don't make the mistake of saying, well, that's different because it's humans versus animals. That's not the point. You can replace it with any other moral issue if you would like to, or you can replace the dead human dishes with a non-human animal that you do care about, like dogs or cats or whales or dolphins. Again, that's not the point. The point is to be thinking about what it would be like to be someone who is morally opposed to something that everybody is doing and that they're so jovial about. So what do I miss? Well, I miss not having those feelings and the feelings of judgment. And I try my hardest to not have those feelings and put myself in better surroundings. It's part of the reason why my Beginner's Guide to Veganism video, I highly recommend that you network with other vegans because I think it's critical at times to not be in these situations and not have these feelings. So that way you don't feel like you have to go against your moral convictions and you can continue to be vegan. I think this point is so important and it's not talked about enough. So I might make future videos just about this, um, maybe multiple videos. If you'd 
you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments down below for sure. The other things that I miss are mostly trivial and like small inconveniences when it's like traveling or something. I don't really miss any like specific non-vegan like clothing or anything. I don't, you know, I didn't have that much leather or fur. I was never really into that. I don't really miss any like specific non-vegan entertainment. I mean, I love seeing animals and stuff. So it's nice to go to like an animal sanctuary, a pig sanctuary or something and see the animals. And if zoos weren't zoos and they instead were sanctuaries, then yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd go and donate to them or something else. But you know, it's like the meme that I see floating around from time to time where it's like, when I was young, I loved zoos because I loved animals. Now I hate zoos because I love animals. Again, most of the things that I miss are pretty trivial, but I would like to restate what I did before. Even though there are times where I might miss things or experiences or feelings that I had before I was vegan, I by no means wish that I didn't know the truth. And I think the benefits of living a vegan lifestyle far, far outweigh the cons. The feeling of trying to live in alignment with my morals and pursue that to the best of my ability feels far better and outweighs the negative feeling of uncomfortableness that I might feel in a non-vegan crowd. So although I think it's important, don't let that hold you up from starting your own vegan journey. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, like it and share it with others. That'd be nice. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching and until next time, stop looking at what you can't do and start looking at what you can do. Thanks.